All right, guys, we're going to be painting this really cute pumpkin man and his raven. I hope that you enjoy it. Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and we are here with a live draw and paint. How's that? I am really, really happy to see people coming in. I hope that you will let me know when you're here by leaving a quick comment. And we're just gonna jump right into this lesson. It's very easy, very, very straightforward. I did do a quick, about 15 minute time-lapse video of making my sample. So this was my sample painting that I did last night and the speed video will be going up either Friday or Saturday. And I have another pumpkin man, this time with a ghost kitty. This one will be just a speed video on YouTube and a patron video on my Patreon. So they'll get the full length video. Please let me know if the sound is good. I'm gonna continue on unless I hear otherwise. Ah, uh, hey there guys. Yay, all right, I'm so excited. Now I am using the, this is the Artistico Aquarelle by Fabriano. It's a block of watercolor paper. It's 140 pounds and five by seven. I have some brushes here. These are the Faux Squirrel brushes by Zenart. And I've got the number 10 round, the number eight round, and the number two rigger. I like these just because they've got a nice snap to them. They are not a, um, a real fur. They don't get as sloppy. I'm not a sloppy brush person. What about you guys? All right, yay, rescue auntie, hello. Ah, oh, that looks like a, let's see, what's your pup? What is your pup there? Your pup looks like a husky, is that right? Or a Malamute in your, your little icon? I love it. I've been watching a lot of um, Malamutes and husky home videos of people. It's really funny. I'm gonna zoom in just a smidge, just so that we've got that like that. And we're gonna start drawing the, oh, before we start drawing, I'm gonna show you where you can get, see, I'm all kerfluffled, kerfluffled. I love you guys. I, I'm all leveled there. All right. So we have the traceable available and I've got different ones. So there's a uh, pumpkin man with the bat, the pumpkin man with the raven and the pumpkin man with the ghost kitty. And I've already painted on the ghost kitty one. If you go to my website on patterns and templates page, you can actually download these for free. I'll show you right here. So on that patterns and templates page on my deliberately dash creative.com, you go to patterns and templates and scroll down. You can get to any of the designs. I have lots and lots of different designs in here, but for this particular project, just hover your cursor over the uh, image you want and right click. Then click on, you can either copy image, copy it and paste it, but you get a better quality image if you download it first. So save image as. And I'm just going to leave it named or name it pumpkin. In the folder, I know where this folder is. I know the name of my file. So now I'm going to click save. And yeah, I know <laughs> it's already exists because I've already saved it. But by saving it, then I have it available. Whoopsie, wrong one. <laughs> there we go. By saving it, I have it available for um, printing off on any paper. Now, if you print it at full size on eight and a half by 11, it is an awesome coloring page for little kids because it's got bigger, more open spaces. If you print it off and tell it that your image is only like five by seven, you get lots of room around it. So you have uh, 
a little bit more grown up, a little bit more sophisticated looking coloring sheet. How's that? It's a Chihuahua Pomeranian. Wow, that's an interesting combination and I never would have guessed that. <laughs> wow. Okay, so now we're going to get in here and we're going to start drawing. So I need to lock my focus. There we go. And this pumpkin guy is really super simple. Now, if you don't want to um, draw him, you can just print it off and wait until I'm ready to start coloring. You can color with colored pencils or watercolor. I'm using watercolor in this lesson. I'm going to rotate this and make it easier for me to draw. I'm saying that the tip of his nose is going to be right about here. The bottom of his body is going to be right about here. His head is about, his head is about half the height of the body. So if I go, his nose is about to here and then the bottom of his chin, then you've got the rest of the pumpkin. Just little lines to give me an idea. Then I'm going to make a really light oval. You're probably not going to be able to see that yet. And it can be kind of a squishy pumpkin. He doesn't have to have a lot of perfectness to him. I want a squishy circle. I'm going to do another kind of squishy circle and he doesn't have to have perfect edges. We're going to draw him in pencil first, then ink it in. Hey, no, Mary, you are not late. We just started. Thank you so much guys for being here. I'm going to put his little nose in. I think I'm going to tip it off to the side a little bit. See, just because it's drawn in one way on the reference, you can draw it any way you want it. It's fun to do that. See how I just drew that right across the little circle. I'm not going to worry about putting too many details in right this second. I am going to give myself a few of those little lobe type lines for his little pumpkin shape. So I have a question. Do you guys like the leaf collar that I did on my, on the sample? Do you like having sort of that autumn leaves collar around? It's kind of like a scarf. So I was, I was looking at it like that, kind of like a scarf. If you have any questions, let me know. And I know that Gina is here and Darcy is here and Auntie is here. Thank you guys so much. Miss Mary is here. I appreciate you guys being here so much. I'm going to go ahead and wait for you to tell me. Hello, Jennifer Bowman. Welcome. Great idea to piggyback this with time lapses. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, the time lapse is going to go up on um, either tomorrow or Saturday. I think probably Saturday. That way people can have the opportunity to watch a quick video or the long video with more chat. I'm going to put his little stem or branch arm in. And this is just a place for his little friend to sit. And see, I'm not too worried about making it mm, perfect. I'm going to put, actually, I want to have his little stem branch down here. I'm not going to worry about erasing that right now. We're going to put his head in. See, simple, simple shapes. And then put his, the top of his wing. I'm going to say his tail is coming down like this. He's a big guy. You see how quick and easy that is? We can make his little mouth as crooked as we want. I like that. So I'm just taking a quick look. 
Your daughter just ordered some new brushes and a bunch of paper. Ooh, Darcy, that's a great gift. I've got your I've got the chat on both sides. I can look at one side or the other side. So I'm kind of double screening. Well, actually, I've got three screens in front of me. Three cameras going. It's like crazy. So right here we've got the our fun little raven in. I'm going to start inking this in, but I was just looking to see. I guess I'm going to put the leaf the leaf collar in. See, and that's just some basically V shapes. Make them as big and up and down as you want. I'm not going to worry about drawing in the grass right now. You're loving this picture? Oh, good. Tip it up a little bit so it's not so glary. The, um, it's set for the colors. So I'm going to now take this Uniball Signo RT1 uh, pen. It's a 0.28. It's basically, you buy it in the office supply section and it's waterproof ink. Huh? So that is making me happy. I'm going to go ahead and ink this in now. And I'm not too worried about making it stay perfect to the, to the lines. I can give him more character. I'm going to zoom in even closer. There we go. You can't wait to do this one? Yeah, it would be a great Halloween card, autumn card, if you, you know, change it up a little bit. He's basically the snowman that everybody does with his little friend, but I tipped him up so he's looking up at the moon up here. But I'm not going to draw the moon. I'm going to just paint the moon, which gives us that more kind of ghostly effect to it but there's that's that's what we're aiming for all right so I'm just going to quickly draw in now wherever a line connects to comes in contact with another line you have to decide is it above or below I'm gonna say that leaf is coming kind of up and bumping into his into his face there There we go. All right. And I am going to go ahead and give his mouth an outline. Put a few of those little lobe type lines in, you know, for the bumps and texture, but I'm not going to draw them all the way across. It gives the opportunity for some things to adjust still when you're putting in your watercolor. And these leaves might not end up being exactly the same with when the watercolor goes on, and that's okay too. There we go. All right. So I think probably when I when I start painting, I'll turn on a little bit of background music. It's just some soft music if you guys are interested. If you're not, I can leave it off. Don't worry about making things perfect. Pumpkins are perfectly imperfect cr creatures. You've been wanting to to paint and draw ravens? Excellent. Well, this is a really easy, basic raven that we're doing. When I drew him in, I basically did the same thing I always do. I started with an egg for the body, and then I added a half circle or upside down U shape. His beak is basically a V, and then some extra long Vs put on for the bottom of his wings and his tail. That's it. So I'm going to go ahead and ink him in. And remember, let your lines be a little bit wobbly. Don't 
don't worry about making them perfect. This bird is going to be basically very dark, so you really don't need to do too much. So his wing is there, his belly is there. He's kind of a quiet little quiet little guy until he starts talking. <laughs> Just make sure that his eye is in line with the opening of his mouth. Wherever wherever the opening of his mouth is, make sure that his eye is kind of in line with that. Um, actually, in line with his beak, not the opening of his mouth. What am I talking about? You know, what am I talking about? I'm going to give him a little bit of some fluffy feather shape under there. The branch coming back. It's going to be easier to see some of these things when I erase all this pencil off. And I'm just going to use a standard pencil eraser just a magic rub. Uh, ravens are your spirit animal. Of course. Never more. Oh, and if you guys, if you like The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, if you do a search for The Raven and then Deliberately Creative, I do a time-lapse drawing of a doodled raven, and I read the poem or the, the short story the raven. It's pretty fun. I need to make sure to link that up here at the top of this video. So, and look how cute that is. See, you can make your own coloring sheets. If you draw this yourself, make your own coloring sheets. Take a picture of it before you start painting. There we go. I want a little bit more of kind of a wobbly line there. That's sort of his center one. But we're not... <laughs> I hope that you guys like that. That's the quick drawing. And inking. Already done. Wow. Okay, I'm going to zoom out just a smidge. There we go. So that we'll be able to see the background. Now, I'm using the core... Q-O-R watercolors and these came in the tubes and I just squeezed a little bit. See, I didn't even fill my pans. I just put a little bit in each of these little pans and I'm using a piece of coral plast, just a piece of plastic or you could use a plate or whatever, something as a palette because I run out of space if I just use that. And I have a small spray bottle. This is just an eyeglass cleaner bottle. Move that that way. Get those nice and nice and soggy. Hello, Miss Amy. Yay, sweet Amy. So glad to see you. All right. Actually, we're going to zoom in just a bit. <laughs> what can I say? I'm zooming in and zooming out. Sorry about that. There we go. And I'm going to grab my biggest brush. We're going to put in the background first. And the background, now the colors that I'm, I have here, this is Payne's Gray. Is I'm not using a black. I've got the Payne's Gray, which is this lovely blue black color. And I am going to just wet my paper with the wet paint. So, and I'm going to leave kind of a, a place for the for the moon I'm not going to worry about making it a perfect spot I am going to add a little bit of gouache to brighten the moon up a bit if I need to and if I leave a little bit of space here and there of sparkle on the paper it's kind of like stars being left, but you know, I don't have to, I'm not going to be totally married to that idea. I am painting over the whole 
backgroundy area under the pumpkin and around. I loved seeing my friends come in. It has been so long and I hope that you guys are have been still doing creative things. I know that many of you have been hanging out with my friend, the Art Sherpa, and I was just over at her speed video for the campfire. Oh, that was so pretty. Let's see. I think I'm going to make down here at the bottom a little bit darker. Kind of like he's sitting in some shadow. Now that the paper is wet, this just goes whoosh right up around him. I will probably add a little bit of gouache into my green that I put for some of the ground that's going to go around here. Hope you guys hope you guys like the 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 setup that I've got going here with the palette and get that a little bit darker up there with the palette and my mixing space trying new things trying new things that's that's the thing here this is my goal is to try new things share my creative journey with you share fun things that everybody can do you know if you don't want to draw you can you can you can trace it you know that's the cool thing here is that you're not limited and if you have littles that want to draw or paint with you you can just print out the coloring sheet and you're ready to go Okay, so that was all just Payne's Gray, no other color. See how I kind of left a space for my moon? <laughs> Yay! I am so glad that people are enjoying this. This, it makes me so happy. I'm gonna put more shadow in here underneath. And even though this is all wet, I am going to take some of that, let's see, that is sap green. And I'm going to put some of that into this to give us that sort of spooky grass greenery thing going on. Not taking it up over the pumpkin right now. I'm, I'm just kind of going in and giving us that murky green night. You know, you don't see color at night as much as you do during the day because even though the lights that you have around are illuminating things, it flattens the colors out, makes them feel more grayed out. There. Ah, ooh. Let's get some of that great action there. Just getting some of that in. The colors go gray at night. You know, yellows go gray and just getting that nighttime thing going on here. I love watercolor and ink. Those are my, my favorite things and have been my favorite things since I was very young. I am actually... Actually, I think I'm going to go up and start putting some of the color in on the Blackbird. Now I'm taking the Payne's Gray and a little bit of some Burnt Sienna 
And yeah, I went right into it with my brush, uh, with my wet, wet, dirty brush into my paint. It's because the pans are dry. I don't really have to worry too much about it. Now I'm going to sort of skip in. Look at that and where his tail kind of is coming in contact with some of the wet or where his head is coming in contact with some of the wet it's going to fuzz out just a little bit look at that get those details in he's going to dry a little bit lighter and i might even go ahead and put some of this white and it looks like the white that I have right handy is actually an acrylic gouache. So I'm going to throw just a tiny drop of that out here. I don't need a lot. And yeah, I am using acrylic gouache with my watercolor brush. As long as I rinse it out really well, it's not a big deal. I'm going to take a smidge of that white into my yellow and I'm going to go in and give it a very pale yellow moon. And I'm letting it go out. See how it we got that glow? Look at that. We're getting this moon glow going on right here. I'm not going to mess with this. It is, uh, well, it was dry paper that I started putting the paint on and I was using a very wet brush. And so then the paper gets wet and then you end up with wet into wet as you add more colors and things like that. I'm taking a little bit of that white gouache over to my gray or to my paints gray mix. I'm going to put a little bit of that onto the bird also and kind of fill in his beak just a little bit. Now I'm using that size 10. Look at that. That's, this is a size 10. It is lovely. I've been doing the whole painting with it because look at that point. Ah, so cool. Oh yeah, embrace the imperfections, guys. Enjoy the imperfections. I am going to, I love, so that's a, what they call that is like a capillary reaction. The wet paper and then that even more wet, um, the, that wet paint, one of them will suck the other one over. controlled moment. I love the moon bloom. Yes. Yes. The moon bloom is amazing, but I am going to go ahead. So if you have any questions, this might be a great time to ask. My tool that I'm using for drying is a heated craft tool. It's very quiet. So I'm hoping that the you guys can hear me over the top of it. And remember, this is the background layer. We don't, you know, all of that back there, it's background. We don't have our bright colors or the, look at that. Ah, this just makes me so happy. You don't have all of your finished colors on here yet. As I add gouache to things, it will allow them to be brighter on top. So you know, you can add it or not. You can leave the white spaces or not. See, I lost most of my sparkles back there. I will, maybe I'll go ahead before I start painting the pumpkin. I'll add some sparkles. Oh, excellent. I'm so glad that there's no interference with my voice. I think that is dry enough. Use the back of your hand to test if it's dry. If it's cold, it's not dry. Nope, that's good. 
All right, so let's just take a look here. Yeah, the moon, I like that moon bloom thing going on. Um, I might add another little layer of some clouds or something going on back here with a little bit of the gouache. Gouache splatters. Yeah, actually, I think that's probably what we're going to do. Let's see if I can... Let's see if I can do it with... This is a is actually a shader brush, but I'm hoping that I can get my... I think it's a shader. Yeah, this is a number 10 Simply Simmons shader. It's probably um, 3 eighths of an inch. Let's see if we can... No, not very dark, not very effective. Okay, so we're going to do our splatters differently. <laughs> Get the paint rinsed out of my brush. Ah. Yeah, I try to answer questions as I see them, if I see it. If I don't see it, then I can't answer. <laughs> and I don't know... Um, Mark is, my husband is here, but he's not necessarily, ah, uh, there we go. Get some stars on. And this is just with the gouache. So this is, whoop, this is acrylic gouache. So it is, see, I can go in and add a few more of those little stars wherever I want. Maybe I've got a couple meteors going through. <laughs> there we go. The earth is passing through a meteor shower. What is my favorite paper for watercolor painting? Ooh, I have lots of favorites. Pretty much whatever I have at hand. But um, in general, my favorite papers are at least um, mm, at least 25% cotton. Most of my papers that are my favorites are 100% cotton. But different techniques, you, you want different... Um, different amounts of cotton or cellulose in the paper. Oops, I just realized my phone is not in. There, now my phone is in the quiet mode. All right, I want to get some color in here on Mr. Pumpkin Man. I am going to take some of that gouache and yellow into his mouth. Kind of preset that so I can keep it a bright yellow inside of his mouth. I think I'm going to take a little bit and put a little bit of texture on the moon. Maybe even take a tiny drop of a little bit of burnt sienna. You know that moon glow is just reflected sunlight. So that's why the moon can have kind of a whitish, yellowish look. Just reflecting some sunlight. I'm going to put a little bit of that um, up here. There. Now we've got some texture on our moon. not really a fan of that strong line right there so I'm just going to go in and break it up a little bit sort of where the the moon and the Sun come together make us those shadows there we go ooh watercolor for practice stuff um, actually the for practice you can get 
the um, the Arteza expert paper is actually really good for doing practice stuff. This gouache painting here was done on Arteza expert and it's not the cotton paper. So you can get, I think it's like 35 or 40 sheets and I buy the 11 by 14 pads. So that way I can cut it down and get four paintings out of each sheet of paper. So just as a something to think about, I'm going to take a little bit more of that yellow and then I'm going to take some of the, this is the TR Pyro Orange and add that into my yellow white mixture. Get in here and get this pumpkin being painted. This is my brightest color. I'm tr I tend to try to put my brightest color on first in those high spots. So something that I, you know, this one ended up going really to the dark and getting more browns and things. I can add those in as I go. You can build up your, your darks, but it's really hard to get that bright glowing color again once you've put a dark color over it. So get those light colors in first, those brighter, bright, bright colors. Look at that. He already feels like he's getting some shape. I am going to take some burnt sienna and add it to my, I guess I'm, I still had a little bit of gouache in that. Get it really wet. I'm going to come down and at, at the base, I'm going to give him a little bit more of that brown. I don't mind if it sort of bleeds into that brighter color. Helps to give him that round shape. Get some of that orangey brown up here. Burnt Sienna is a very orangey red brown. So it works so well for autumn style uh, paintings. Sort of work that in as a bit of a shadow on the pumpkin. You notice I didn't use black or even the Payne's gray as a shadow on the pumpkin because your shadows, your shadows are the same colors, just deeper and darker and a little bit less saturated. Ah, uh, so the trouble with practice watercolor paper is that when you take what you learned to the good paper, it might react differently. That is true. That is true. So one of the, one of the tricks is to buy some of the really good paper. I mean, this is student grade, hundred percent cotton paper. Okay. So it reacts the same or very similarly to your higher level papers. And it is inexpensive comparatively or buy a big sheet of paper and cut it down into lots of little sheets like postcard size and do your practice on postcard size because the techniques that you learn will be the same. All right. I want to get some more of that pyro orange and the yellow and yep, I did. I just went right into my yellow with that. Look at that. It's darker. So I'm not going to take it across the very center of my pumpkin. I want to leave some of that highlighty bit, but I do want to get some of this all over. I'm trying to stick with the same colors. So, so far in this painting, we have the cadmium yellow, we have the pyrrole orange, Payne's gray, and sap green. That's all that's in this. And a touch of white gouache. 
because, you know, I really like gouache for, for Halloween paintings. Now I'm going to take some of that orange. I'm keeping the top pumpkin lighter on purpose, if anybody was wondering, because it's up closer to the moonlight, he's getting more of a glow. So there we go. I've missed all of you guys too. You know, um, this year has just been a year of challenges. I think every year though really is a year of challenges. And we have choices where we can, you know, things that we can do to grow. Things that are hard help us grow. So I've been, you know, dealing with my things that are hard this year. Oh, that's looking good. I want to put a little bit of that orange inside his mouth because that's kind of like the shadow at the back of the pumpkin. But I want to leave a rim of that light down around the bottom. There we go. Oh, see? Little things, little things. I'm going to grab some of the burnt sienna and that Payne's Gray mix them together, get a rich brown, get my sort of dark brown branch put in. And I'm going to take a little bit of that orange into that brown lighten it up just a little bit with orange. I'm going to use that up here on his nose. And because the brown is a darker color or more saturated color than that washed out Payne's Gray, his nose just shows up so well. But that Payne's Gray in the background gives you some shadow and texture on that stem. How's that? I'm going to take a little tiny bit of the little tiny bit of the white gouache and mix it in with that brown that's on my brush and just give him a little bit of some highlight in that also. Tiny little details. You don't have to do all the details that I'm doing guys. Put a little bit of that across the, that edge. I am somebody that can go a little too far with my details sometimes. And I'm going to take some of that brown that's mixed with that little touch of gouache. And I'm going to make that into some shadows, a little bit stronger shadows under those leaves. I am going to add a red into our mix, I think. I'm going to put a little bit of that dark brown shadow right here underneath. And use that for drawing in my little lobes a little bit more. Little shadow, not much. Like I said, I want to keep this top pumpkin a little bit brighter. Thank you guys. I really appreciate that. I, I appreciate the kindness and the support you guys have here. I, I am so grateful for this community. And, you know, we all deal with things and you guys make it so much easier to deal with it. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of that there. I ooh, just splashed just splashed my water. I want to soften those shadows up just a bit. I don't want them to look quite so outliney. Look at that. You just go in with a touch of water and just blur that edge. My 
intention is for this guy to absolutely look so cute. I think we're, we're getting there. I think we're getting there. I'm just going to drag a little bit. See, a just a wet brush, and you can drag a little bit of that color around. There. A little bit of that there. All right. So, Mr. Mr. Raven here, I'm going to use a little bit of that brown right over the top. and a touch of kind of straight Payne's gray and let it sort of flow in just a little bit you know it's he's not going to have this big bright wide open he <laughs> unfortunately my birds can end up looking more like kookaburra than Then Raven, I kind of, a kookaburra is a type of bird down in Australia. I need to take that stripe out. I don't want a stripe in his wing there. I do want to make his wing a little bit more black and keep the Ooh. Oh, he's looking like a, a wise, grizzled, knowing raven. Take a little bit of that orange, actually, and put that down in here on his, on his feet. Bottle the energy of a baby. Ooh. That would be, that would be very, very helpful sometimes. <laughs> All right, I'm going to grab some of the yellow and mix it in with my green and then grab some of the orange and mix it into the green. So I'm making kind of a muddy, muddy orange green. And then I will take some of the yellow and just mix it with, let's see, how does it go with that one? Ooh, that made kind of a murky red. I want some of the scarlet, I think. So I'm gonna put some red on the some of these leaves and I want it to be a clean red. I'm not, it's not too much. I will put some of the red into the uh, grasses and stuff also so that it gets put around in more places than just on his leaves. Now I'm going to pick up some of that orangey, orangey color that we mixed up. This is autumn leaves. Autumn leaves do not require any specific color palette. You can make them whatever you want. I like the idea of the collar like this. It, it really does. It reminds me of a, of a scarf or, you know, like, like you would put on the Halloween or the Halloween, like you would put on a uh, snowman. There we go. Snowman, my brain. Oh, what song are you guys getting in your heads? Uh, yes, this year really did amplify the learning how to deal with hard things. I'm putting some straight cad yellow on. But you know what? We are stronger for all those hard things. We are stronger. We are more resilient. Artwork makes you more resilient. Gonna drop some of that green on now that I've got just a these leaves are now wet with lots of color so I can drop some green on there 
This was that green that got mixed up a little bit with some things. I'm going to take some of the straight sap green. Go to there. I'm going to drop some of that towards the back. I'm not worried about it flowing across right now. These are getting that uh, autumn leaf tie-dye. Oh, yes, that song. Kookaburra. Sits in the old gum tree. Merry, merry king of the bush is he. Laugh, kookaburra, laugh, kookaburra. How gay your life must be. All right, I'm drying this now <laughs> because I want to put a little more detail on those leaves. And we're going to put the grasses in. And I think we're going to be getting close to done. You can add as many details. You can take colored pencils in. You can uh, take ink back in. I just realized that my acrylic gouache had gone up and splashed onto the onto the raven. Raven, blackbird, crow. <laughs> Evil earworm. Yes, that song, hey, it's better than than some earworms. Let me tell you. There are some of them out there. Oh my gosh, those songs can can really, really do you in. All right, let's test. Yep, he's dry. I'm going to go in and add some not-so-wet sap green. The paper is pretty much dry. I love details. I love putting in lots of details. So if you don't want more details, don't go back in and put more details in. You're painting and you are the one in charge of it. Just because I do something does not mean you have to. And that is one of the really super cool things about artwork is I might have you know, I, I designed this, this is, you know, it's my design, but you go in and paint this and it's like we're collaborating and collaborators do not have to do exactly the same thing that the original person did. You can modify and adjust. Oh, I like that. And I'm going to go back and take some of that. No, it was, was it the scarlet? It was the scarlet. There we go. Put a few spots of that brighter scarlet in. I love autumn leaves. I love the ones that are multi, multi colors. And this little guy, he found the jackpot of multicolor leaves. He's a happy, happy pumpkin. And I'm happy to share him with you. So do you guys want to see the little, the, this little guy? He's basically going to be the same thing, but with the little bat. I think I want to do him just as a speed video. Let me know. Let me know. Or would you like a little bat video without the pumpkin man? Because I can do that too. I was thinking that might be kind of fun. So yeah, I am down here on these last little details, just having fun. I am going to dry and then I have to be brave because I'm going to put brown and green and red and make grasses and stuff like that, you know, twiggly bits and things.
you know, looking at my inspiration of color. See? Is that kind of the inspiration of color for those? <laughs> ah, guys, thank you so much. And, you know, I am... Well, I had a little green on here, and I'm just taking it up into the shadow underneath. Oh, I like that. Sometimes you set your brush down and you're like, oh, I forgot what color I had. And then it works out. Always, you can always work it out. Remember, if you put a color down and you're not happy or it surprised you, put it more places. And then it looks like you did it on purpose. See, I'm going to take a little bit of this brighter orange under his mouth. I'm going to take a little bit of that white into that bright orange. I want to give him a little bit more of a brighter outline up here. I think maybe we'll just take the gouache by itself. Oh, that's too gloop. Too gloop. So we have a little bit of this up here. A little touch up here. Top of his head. He's going to be in his beak. I'm going to give him a little bit of white right here and then I will come back and detail that a little bit. This is just a little bit of white gouache coming in and giving some highlights, making bits of him stand out. Now I'm going to take a bit of that Payne's Ray. make the tail feathers sort of stand out a little bit like that and dot of that Payne's gray right here in his eye details. I love details. I love going in and doing more and more and more and more details. And sometimes I can get a little bit over. <laughs> I can go a little overboard, but I think I'm good on that. I don't want to touch the bird anymore. I don't want to touch the main body of the pumpkin. I do want a little bit more shadow. In the stem it needs to stand out a little bit sometimes you've got to go back and add a little bit not too much get a little bit of detail oh that's looking good all right I'm gonna put some of those green grasses in Green grow the grasses, oh. Actually, it's green, gra green grow the rushes, oh, but okay. We're gonna paint some of that darker green. Right up across him. Oh my goodness, what did I do? What did I do? I'm having fun. All right, so I picked up a little bit of Van Dyke Brown to mix with my burnt sienna. The bat video sounds good? All right, good, good. I'm going to do him as a 
as a speed video and then it will be available to my to my patrons I'm just putting some sticks in here will be available to my patrons as a full a full video so if you're interested in uh, supporting me on patreon I have all my information will be down below in the more information box you are more than welcome to join us there I'm gonna mix some of that brown and I want to keep the paint thicker I don't really want to go too wet and gloopy now I'm gonna make some green sort of shadowy bits now, one of the neat things here is that I don't have to keep this bottom part because I'm looking at it going, I want to trim it off. Or not. Maybe I'll, I'll just fill it in with more green and brown and maybe a touch of that, uh, what is it, touch of those, that scarlet red. Ooh, that actually made a burnt sienna color. Um, as we're getting closer to us, maybe a little bit more. There we go. Sort of oots up into that. Blur out that base. Get some more color in here, you know. <laughs> oh, he's basking in the glow of his moonlight. Getting a serenade from his raven friend. I think that's what he's doing. Quietly lurking. Hey, Sherpa. Thank you so much. Okay, shh, Sherpa's not here. Just just smile and, and wave at her. <laughs> Thank you guys, wow. All right, I am gonna dry this really quick. If you have any questions, make sure to let me know. Thank you guys. Yeah, thumbs up, like, comment, all the good things. I really appreciate you being here. I love how he looks like he's really sitting down into that dark. I want to bring a little bit more of the dark right here across the bottom so that he really looks like there's um, things in front and that they're not transparent. All right. Oh, this is so cute. I like that I went and did the little bit darker, but brighter. See how they're different? You can do, you can do things differently each time. They don't have to be exactly the same. Yeah, I do. I need to get a little bit darker right down here at the bottom, but that's why. That's why we dry. So then these other colors going on top can be much more opaque or not as transparent. And I think, ooh, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pick up a touch of this white gouache now and mix it in. We're gonna have some of this more gray tone coming up. like highlights and I am trimming him off cool thing you get to make the decisions on your artwork so when I sign it I need to sign it up high enough so that put a little 
a bit of highlight on here. You need to sign it up high enough if you're going to trim it off. I'm just, ooh, I like that. The moon is catching just a little bit of glow on some of these branches and leaves. And I'm very dry on my brush now. There we go. Rinsey, rinsey, rinse, rinse, rinse. And you know, the, the white kind of gives you that Ooh, I like that. It gives you that little bit of things are even more in the front. Keep your lines very light and right now my brush is much more wet. Not, not much more wet, but the paint is a little bit more fluid. There we go. I want a touch of that dark. around here. <laughs> I can hear the crows outside. We, we have like a ton of crows in our neighborhood. All right. Sign it. And I think maybe I'll make it a ghostly, a ghostly signature this time. Ever so slightly mixed in right here. Ooh. I need to dry that. <laughs> it really flowed off the brush. We'll give this a quick dry and then pull him off the card here. I love the colors down here in the bottom. This has been so much fun. It, I am really looking forward to doing more live streams, but also sharing the uh, quicker time-lapse videos. So there is a time-lapse of this guy going up on Saturday. Well, Friday or Saturday. I have it all edited. I just don't want to do it today because I did this guy and I want to give him a chance. I want to give him a chance. But this little one, he looks like the cover of a coloring book or a really nice, uh, ooh, that would be the pr a pretty cover for a journal or sketchbook for Halloween. I think that's pretty fun. I hope that you guys enjoyed the process of drawing, inking, and then painting live with me here on Deliberately Creative. If you do this, please tag me on social media. And that is at deliberately creative, all one word. And I will show it some love, share it along with all of the other beautiful art that I see out in the world. Thank you. And remember to go out and do something creative, take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. I want to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>